Hey friends, you are with me Anuradha from learningmilestone.com and we'll be creating a Python based text program grocery store. So what do we expect from this program is to show users what are the items available in the store and let the users add items of their choice to cart. And finally, once the user is done, finally generate a bill. So let's see how it should work once it is programmed. Let's run this. Enter your name. It says welcome to my store Anu. Then it shows items available in our store. And these are the items. Do you wish to proceed with shopping? Yes. If I say no, it will exit me out of the program. And then once I say yes, it asks me to add items. I can add items from the available ones. Soap, five. Um, let's add more items. Yes, juice. Okay, three. Um, uh, let me add yet one more yes. And if I enter any item which is not available, it says unable to add item not available. Do you wish to add more items? I say no. And it gives final bill generated with item quantity and subtotal. Okay. And then the total bill. That's how it should work. So we'll be implementing this program using these concepts. We'll be learning reading data from a text file. All the items which are displayed to user are updated in a text file and displayed through a dictionary. And we'll be using dictionary for that matter. And we need to loop through a dictionary. So we'll be using for loop and then while loop if elif else. Okay, so let's go and implement the program. Let's get it started. So create a new script or new wrapper grocery store and uh, what additional I have in this wrapper uh, is this available grocery items .txt file. So in case you're working on some different editor, you can have a, a same uh, text file in same directory for now. And what does this contain is item and unit price, right? So item and then separated by one space um, the price of each item. So right now there are a total of 12 items. You can have as, as many items as you wish. Okay, so let's see first how the program is supposed to run. As we can clearly see that it asks user name and when user enters the name, it says welcome to my store. Anu. Right, I think this is very straightforward till this welcome message and let's implement this. So let's write a comment. Welcome to welcome user. What we will be doing, we will be asking username using input method. Please enter your name. Now uh, we want to say welcome to my store Anu, right? So let's create a welcome message. String is equal to welcome come to my store and we'll make use of f string to incorporate username name now to have these asterisk of the same length as uh, um, this welcome message which includes username as well what we can do we can take the length of this string first okay so to find the length of this string welcome message Okay, len wc message. Let's see this. Okay, can be calculated using len method. So, len method will give us the number of characters in the string. Okay, whichever string which we do, we pass to it. So, len welcome message. So, whatever is the string length, we want to have asterisk of that length, right? So, to do that, we can do print. So we'll take an asterisk inside a string and perform a multiplication operation. 
now we know that if we multiply a string by any number okay so let me just comment this and uh, let me just uncomment this if i multiply any string let it be hello or say hi and if i multiply it by four i'll get hi repeated four times similarly i can use any string right if i do asterisk four times i'll get asterisk four times and now i know how many times i want asterisk is equal to the length of the welcome message so i'll uncomment it and i'll simply multiply this by this number and get the asterisk equal to the length of the welcome message let me run it again and let me use name right so length of the asterisk increases and then now i want to print welcome message and then i again want to repeat this right so we should be getting this output with this code run laura joe okay welcome to my store laura joe perfect so we are done with the welcome message of user next thing which we come which we need to implement is we need to display the items available in our store and we know these items are already updated in the text file and what we need to do simply is to fetch data from this text file and display to user right but one more thing we need to display in some manner uh, this message perfect we can do that the other thing is item colon and the price of the item we need to have this in this display method so let's see how we can do that let's see first how we can read data from a file in python in general from a text file okay so i'll comment this out and let's add a comment read data from a text file and we have this text file which contains some data right and we need to read this data through the code so how we can read that what can be the different methods so first thing which we need to do is we need to open the file okay and open the file and uh, we need to give file name which file we are going to open since it is in the same directory i just need to give the name otherwise i would have required to give um location as well so file and make sure at the end when you are done you need to close the file okay there's an alternate method using with the statement but let's just focus on this one now my file opening the file and finally when we are done with the reading of the file we are closing the file so when we open the file it creates an object okay and that object has different ways of reading the file so let's talk about them one by one so let's say i want to read the whole file into a string so for that i can take this object my file and apply dot read method on it let me print file underscore str and if we run this we'll get the whole file in the string format but i also want to access each um, item and its price separately for my later use so we'll come to that so another method which we can obtain is reading line wise okay so if i have file underscore line for that i need a read line method from file object and i can apply file underscore um, print file underscore line so at a time it will read one line and the important point to note over here is that cursor once this reading of line line is done cursor moves to next line and how we can say that if i again read this file okay uh, it will read the second line and not the first line again right and along with that it has a new line character so that is the second way now the third way could be this read all the contents of the uh, file line wise and store each element 
or each line in a as an element in a list so we get a list when we apply read lines method so let's see what we get with this we get the whole content of the file with each element or with each line as an element of the list and each element comprises of item name and the price of the unit price of the item followed by slash n which is new line character now i simply want the list of the items and i don't want this column over here item unit price for that what i can do first i can read first line let my cursor move to this point and then i apply read lines so then i will have a proper list which only contains item and their unit prices so let's see what we get so item unit price and i have a list which is this right now we have fetched items into a list let's get and fetch each element from the list first and then separate them into item and their corresponding price and add them finally to a dictionary let's move one by one so to fetch an item from the list we know that we can use for loop so i will use for item item can be is a variable name using in method in keyword for item in and our list name is items available right so so let me just add a comment all right so for items in item available so if i print this right what i will get let's say print item what i'll get right uh, through this for loop i'll be able to access each element as a string each element has two parts one is item name price and also we have this slash and character which is shown as a blank line over here so we need to get rid of it as well we need to separate item and its corresponding price and add them this as the key and this is the price in a dictionary so let me also create one dictionary okay um, and i'll just create an uh, um, empty dictionary item dict or okay. item available dict okay and to create an empty dictionary we just need to have simply curly braces and now we've planned to update this so let's first split each item and its price using split method we know that this is a list right this is a string so we can use a split method if i just apply dot split over here and run this again we can see that we are able to fetch each um, element and in turn item and price into a list and now it is easy to access item and its price by simply indexing so if i do um, this thing zero and uh, let let me save it okay instead of printing it let me save it so let me save it in item underscore price equal to and actually it's item name so i'll just save item underscore name equal to and item underscore price is one okay and um, let's also do one thing let's just quickly print them using f string so item underscore name colon item underscore price right and no i need to have one more curly braces let's see what we get at this point of time we get something like this additionally what we can do we can save this items in the dictionary item available dict and we know that dictionary is a data type which has key value pair in it and update is the method which helps us to add the complete key value pair element in the list right so we can simply pass item name colon item price right so what i'll do i'll just remove this all right so if i print i'll come out of for loop and i'll print item available dict at this point of time 
and we will be able to see that we have item and the item name or uh, item price in the list as well right in the dictionary as well so right now we don't need this we'll be needing it later so what we need is we want to show user yes these are the items available and we can simply do this by having that print statement which we needed right something like this and i can also do print the our old technique into let's say 20 this time okay and let's run this let's see what we get this time and i'll just remove this extra print statement so we have this right now if i uncomment this we have welcome user show welcome to my store joe items available in our store this 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 perfect right now what is our next step let's see our existing program please enter your name joe welcome to my grocery store joe do you wish to proceed with shopping yes or no so definitely we need to ask give input prompt to user whether user wishes to proceed with shopping yes no and we need to save the response and on the basis of the response we need to act so let's first add this and then also see if what happens if we say no okay if we say no we are directly taken to this the last part of the program we are sorry you don't want to purchase this time hope to see you back soon so i hope it is easy to implement let's do it quickly all right so let me add a comment over here prompt user to add items i'll create another variable proceed shopping okay and i'll use input method add the message do you wish yeah so whatever response user gives yes no right what we can do we can uh, first let's address no okay so we will definitely make use of if else over here so i'll say if proceed shopping is equal to so double equal to is a comparison operator single equal to is assignment operator where we just assign a value to variable but when we are using double equal to that means we are comparing the value of a variable or two things uh, with each other and so we are having this user response and we are comparing it with um yes okay now user can enter capital yes also so i just want to make sure whatever user enter i convert it into lowercase and if it is equal to yes okay i have a colon and for now i'll just create a placeholder i will write a flow over here later on but let me just address a no part so if proceed dot shop proceeds shopping door is equal to yes perfect otherwise exit out of our shopping right so we'll just directly take user to else part and we will say what for what was that message uh, we are sorry um okay so i'll just copy this okay i'll just simply print this we are sorry you don't want to purchase this site at this time hope to see you back soon so let's run it we have this joe do you wish to proceed no all right so we are done with the no part and now comes the if part where we need to handle if the user says yes we need to ask user which items to be added one by one and the quantity of the user let's see the flow again if i run it joe this is existing program right so yes so once the user says yes that is that means i am inside if i have to give option to user to add item okay so i user can type anything over here okay let's say user types existing item which has been presented to user let's say user um, types eggs okay so the next prompt we will say is add quantity so let's see how we can do that so let's go inside if when the user says that yes i want to proceed for shopping and at this point of time we will ask user item okay i'll create a variable input add an, an item 
okay and this item which user enters may exist in this uh, uh, available items or may not exist so we should check at that point of time so we'll say if item added okay so user can enter any case so let's just convert it into dot title whatever user enters we convert it into dot title with the help of string method and with the help of in keyword we can check if this item is available in item available ticked or not okay so if the item is available perfect let's just pass it for now and if it is not available let's say that um, print unable to add unavailable all right so let's check this flow first run enter your name anything do you wish to proceed no was already working let's run it again run do you wish to proceed yes add an item so let's add an item which is not existing in the dictionary and we'll see this and we get this unable to add an unavailable item okay so now let's go to the part where the item entered by the user exists in the dictionary at that point of time we want to say user add quantity of the item also okay so i'll just remove this and i'll say item underscore qty is equal to input add quantity okay so once we ask quantity from user we have different informations on our plate one the user the item which user has added the quantity of that corresponding item which user wants and also we need to know the total price for the corresponding quantity right now we have in our hand the unit price of the item right from item available ticked let me just print item available ticked again and let's understand it so we have two dictionaries one is of item available where we have item and its unit price and the other dictionary which is right now empty and we need to have information in that which is like item added then to the item added let's just make a fake thing right let's say item added right so any item which user has added let's say egg for example okay what we need to have corresponding to eggs is the quantity of eggs user want right let's say user want to a quantity and also we want the price price of this total price right subtotal i can say that subtotal so uh, let me put it in quotes so if i have to find the subtotal of x i need to have unit price right unit price of x and uh, then i need to multiply it with a quantity two right from where i can fetch unit price i already have item available ticked which has list of item which is item and its corresponding price right let's say 3.1 now all i need to know is i need to fetch this so how can i fetch unit price again with the help of key right so you for unit price i can do item available ticked and i can pass the item to it right that will give me the unit price of this egg right so let's apply the same thing and make a shopping dictionary using this one thing to note down is in item available tick this needs to be int uh, let me run it again and uh, let's comment this out okay and i don't want this to that was dummy data let's run it and i'm printing item available ticked again enter your name anu um, so this is item available ticked right now we can see that the price is there in the dictionary but it is it is a string right so we need to have it in form of integer so that we can multiply it with right quantity so 
while fetching the data itself what we can do when we are updating the item available dict dot update we can have um, int form of it right so uh, we can simply say int item price right so let's see if it works again run it anu and oops um, i think uh, the error is because price is decimal, right? So let's just try this. Uh, no. yeah. So now the price has got converted into a number from a string and now we will be ready to uh, create our shopping dictionary, right? So let's go back over here. So we have asked from user item added, then we have asked item quantity and now we have to update shopping dictionary, right? Which is right now empty. So uh, let me create this shopping dict is equal to empty, right? So I'll just update this with this information. Shopping dict. And we note that what is the method to update in the dictionary update method followed by circular brackets and then we can add one or more items so right now we are adding only one item and that item is item added right colon and key is the nested dictionary so dictionary inside dictionary is nested dictionary because we need to have Further information in the form of dictionary, the one is item quantity, right? So it's quantity, colon item quantity, right? Let's give it a key and then we need to have price or we can say subtotal, right? colon and now we need to fetch the value from this item available dictionary for the item which is added so what we can say item available dict right and then we pass the key to it key is again item added right and then we need to multiply it with quantity to get the subtotal I know it is getting complex, but let's just focus on this, right? Should we print a shopping dict? Yes, it is definitely required. So let me just print it somewhere. Print it here only, okay? Print shopping dict. Okay, let's run this. Uh, no. Yes, add an item eggs add quantity 10 up oh, again uh, the error it says that key error eggs key is not existing um, so okay yeah so the key which is existing is capital e x okay so i should be doing dot title over here as well right so whatever user enters should be converted into dot title let me just run it again a no and yes and eggs 10 perfect so we have a shopping dictionary now with this uh, we are able to give option to user to add item add quantity and then we are also able to give subtotal right but what we also want to continue this process until user says that add an item no okay so what should we be doing we want to do continue repeat this activity till the user says no so we have to create a loop called while loop so let's see so to repeat this activity rather than putting it in if we can put it in while loop okay so instead of if i can change it to while what while does again it checks for the condition evaluates for the condition in front of it and if it returns true it executes the corresponding block but the difference is it does it 
repetitively until uh, this value turns to false okay so at the end of while loop what we can do we can ask user again right the same question in slightly different manner so at the end of while loop right once this if else thing is done i can ask user again do you wish to proceed instead of that i can ask do you wish to add more items right so everything is same so uh, proceed shopping yes uh, so this returns true this all happens and at the end of while loop again if user says yes while again checks is it yes okay then do it again if it is no then let's not do it again i can slightly change this message to i because it is applicable for both when the user is showing doing shopping and when not user is not proceeding for the shopping for the first time so we can say we are sorry you don't want to purchase this time okay hope to see you back soon so i'll just change it so let's run this again anu um do you wish to proceed let's say no hope to see you. Uh, okay run it again anu um yes add an item milk i set quantity 2 okay again it shows me do you wish to add more items i say yes add an item eggs add quantity 3 perfect so as we can see we are printing shopping dictionary which is getting updated every time uh, item is added so it is a nested dictionary clearly so item added quantity for the corresponding item and the subtotal then again the item added and the corresponding quantity and subtotal and again um, when i say no it should wrap up hope to see you back soon so we are done with this part right so what we did we added while loop to ask question from the user again whether he wants to proceed whether the user wants to proceed or not now the last thing which is left is once user says no after adding certain amount of um, um uh, items we need to generate bill and how we can generate bill uh, we can generate bill by going to shopping dictionary right and fetching the items and the corresponding subtotal and then finally totaling all the subtotals right that should be the logic so we need to uh, basically loop through the dictionary fetch the key and fetch one of the value right uh, so let's do that so let's go to the else part okay so while and else can coexist together because while evaluates condition right so till the point user says yes this loop happens for adding item and once this condition returns for this whole condition when the user says no it goes to the else part where we get the message hope to see you back soon right now before saying hope to see you back soon we should generate a bill also so i'll go to this else which is corresponding to while part right when the user does not want to do any more shopping and i'll just i have these readily done print statements in interest of time so what i have i have print slash and slash and that is we'll give to space line not necessary just for the good look or just for the clarity then i'm printing bill summary then again slash and then quantity subtotal thank you and somewhere here in between we need to generate the bill by looping through the shopping dictionary so let's just run it and see anu yes milk books milk i did some okay anyways we can see that uh, we have bill summary item quantity subtotal thank you hope to see you soon and in between of this thank you and this thing we need to generate the bill right so to generate the bill we need to go through the shopping dictionary right shopping dictionary which has uh, 
item and uh, corresponding quantity so um, let's run it again uh, so to go through any dictionary right uh, we can uh, loop through the dictionary by saying that for key in so it will go and will be will be able to access the key of each uh, each key of the dictionary by using for loop in this manner key is just a variable name we can have any value over here uh, so for key in shopping dict and then colon right now what we want to fetch over here we want to generate a f string right we want to generate a f string which contains uh, each key right its quantity and its subtotal so we already know uh, that shopping dictionary has that information so what i'll do print okay let me do one thing let me run it one more time so that we can visualize it in better manner anu yes add an item milk to yes eggs for no okay so here we can see this shopping dictionary right so i need to have through shopping dictionary key so i'll just uncomment this again i'm sorry okay print so start with the f string what i want first is item right so i want key so we are through this loop we are able to access this key so i can directly give key over here right but definitely in curly braces to access this variable and what else i want let's give a space and then what i want is quantity now how can i fetch the quantity belonging to shopping dictionary milk key or any item key by doing this dictionary name right and what is the key key right and we should not forget about putting this in curly braces else it will be a string only so shopping dict key and what i want so we are able to access this nested dictionary which is again uh, if we want to access quantity we need to give quantity key so i'll give quantity right and um, what am i missing invalid syntax okay let's see if we are able to fix it later uh, let me just continue so f string shopping dict key quantity belonging to key and then we have yeah i want one more right i want price that is subtotal subtotal from here so key and i'll say subtotal not sure what am i missing over here in terms of syntax um what's that i'm missing let me just figure it out oh i know what is that i'm missing so i am using double quotes outside right so i cannot use double quotes inside the string i should use the other quote right so this is single quote which i should be using so it's simple string thing if the string is double quotes i should be and i need to use quotes inside i should use the other quotes and the vice versa okay so let's see what we get out of it okay i know oops it's getting long and long yes add an item milk to yes i want to drink milk <laughs> do you wish to add more items yes i want eggs too eggs add four okay no i don't want anything else all right perfect so we have quantity milk we can work out with spacing we can give more spacing over here and then we need sub we need one more field which is total right so let's work on that too 
Okay. Okay, so let me work on this uh, total thing. So what I can do for doing total, I need the total of this field, right? Shopping ticket key total. What I can do, I can create a variable over here. Total is equal to zero. Initially, let's keep its value as zero. And um, every time uh, I'm accessing the subtotal thing, I can add that to total, right? So, and again, save it in total so initially total is zero for the first time when the loop runs i add this subtotal right to the total which is initially zero next time it is not zero next time its value is same as this but then i again add the another subtotal right so i need to print this as well so what i can do i can simply do print Again, let's make use of app string total colon and let's give total. Oops, and run it again. Anu, yes, milk, two, yes, eggs, four, no. Oh, I got an error. Uh, total is equal to this thing plus total. Okay. Mm. Unsupported open time for plus set and int. Oops. I did something wrong over here. Again, unmatched curly braces. Okay. So let's run it again. Oh, I'm so desperate to run this again. Anu, yes. Add an item, milk, two, yes. Eggs, four, I want juice also, yes. Juice, I hope it exists, yeah. Juice, two, three, no perfect so we have our program done and i'm so happy i didn't get any error this time and i hope uh, i know that it was quite a long program but i also know that it involved a lot of concepts and i hope i was able to uh, explain them well and in case you have any questions you can definitely ask me through comments and if you like my video do like it and share it to others and subscribe to my channel thank you so much